Coming up, more shocking truths about the medical impact of being super thin. You're either sexy and skinny or you're just not sexy. It's actually the effects of starving that will cause the body to almost eat itself up. And more scary pictures of the stars as you've never seen them before. The need to be thin seems to be superseding everything, even motherhood. Um, for the longest time, motherhood was about having this baby and enjoying it and, and bonding with it. Whereas now, your value as a mother is how quickly you can get back into those size 6 jeans. They're beautiful, they're skinny, and they're breeding. The age of the yummy mummy is here. Model Heidi Klum appeared on the catwalk just weeks after having a baby, while Liz Hurley was back to her old super thin self soon after she gave birth. In a recent UK survey of 500 pregnant women and new mothers, 80% said they felt pressure to lose weight after having their baby because celebrity mums made weight loss look easy. The example of the sort of celebrities who, who have children set to the average woman is quite dangerous in a way. At a time when women should be looking after their bodies and nurturing their bodies and re-nourishing them, then you know, that's not a time for dieting, it's a time for eating well. There are rumours that some celebrity mums may even have had a little help getting back into shape from the surgeon's knife. A tummy tuck is the cheat's way to beat nature after a caesarean. It slightly defeats the purpose of having a tummy tuck when you're still fairly swollen and bloated. And so whilst it may seem like an attractive idea, I think it's a bad idea. On average for women, it takes about 12 months to get back to your pre-pregnancy weight. It does take a long time and it sets up this unrealistic expectation. Glamour girl Jordan is the queen of the yummy mummies. The mother of two has earned millions from her silicon assets. In 2005, just weeks after her second baby was born, Jordan shocked the world by taking to the red carpet in nothing more than her underwear. She was wearing not a lot more than black underpants and she looked phenomenal. She'd lost every ounce of weight and she had no stretch marks and I just don't know how women can do it. I tell you what, weeks after having my kids I wouldn't have done a Jordan special. There's no way. I mean, give me a couple of months after the birth of my kids. No, I wouldn't even do that. <laughs> Jordan is worth tens of millions of pounds and the reason for this, she has traded on her body. Her body always looks amazing and that is her prime asset. But if Jordan made it look easy, she later revealed that it took a lot of work to achieve post-baby perfection. Jordan lost two stone on a low-carb diet trying to get ready for her wedding to Peter Andre. In her book, she confessed she missed real food and said of her tough exercise regime, it was such hard work. After a few minutes, I'd be thinking, why am I putting myself through this? It's agony. Jordan was on a juice diet, but I understand she um, reportedly was also having chicken and fish and, and vegetables, so it wasn't just juice. But it, she was still missing out two important food groups. She wasn't having much carbs, so you're getting sort of healthy energy from things like pasta and bread and potatoes that she was missing out on. And also dairy food, so she wasn't getting all important calcium, protein and zinc and B vitamins. Someone like Jordan, who's, who's revered for her body, whose livelihood in many ways depends on her being a sex symbol. You know, she's not allowed to be sexy and, you know, slightly overweight. You're either sexy and skinny or you're just not sexy. Anorexia is the most serious form of eating disorder. About 90% of anorexics are female, and the illness usually affects girls in their teens. Anorexia is a disorder in which someone pers actively pursues, although it can in the beginning be unconscious, a very low body weight or wants to avoid being a normal body weight and will do that by avoiding food. The last few years have seen a disturbing rise in pro-anorexia or pro-ana websites. These sites encourage eating disorders in teens and offer tips on how girls can look more like their super thin icons. They talk about celebrities who are a thin inspiration to them. They swap tips on how to fool your parents or your doctors into thinking that you're well when actually you're ill with anorexia. In 2004, former US child star Mary Kate Olsen became a role model for the pro-ana movement. 
She was the ultimate skinny teen, and the media soon took notice of the star's increasingly shrinking figure. I think everybody was shocked when the pictures of Mary Kate Olsen um, appeared, um, and you could visibly see the bones jutting out of her, her back. It was really upsetting to see, and it just highlighted how bad things have got for her. Mary Kate and twin sister Ashley have been stars in the States their whole lives, starting out as infants in the hit US sitcom Full House. Being a child star brings its own peculiar psychological pressures. You're in the public eye much earlier. There is a huge emphasis on success and a huge emphasis on competition. So this is someone who will have been looked at and dissected in terms of her physical appearance from a very early age. In June 2004, Mary Kate's family persuaded her to go to hospital to receive treatment for anorexia. And Sister Ashley confessed in a press interview she's been struggling for quite a while. She's taking the time she needs for herself. Really, an anorexic person will make you stop dead in your tracks on the street. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing quite so shocking looking as an anorexic person. And I think that the term anorexic gets bandied about a lot when we're just talking about skinny people. There's, re there's such a huge difference. It's actually the effects of starving that will cause the body to almost eat itself up. And if the body eats itself up, it's not just a loss of fat, the body systems will eventually collapse. About one in five people with anorexia will ultimately die. Mary Kate was just one week past her 18th birthday when she received treatment for anorexia. Could the pressure of childhood fame have been a trigger for her illness? There's always been a big argument that Part of anorexia, of course, is about kind of desexualizing yourself, about, you know, in some sense, stalling your development at one particular point in your, in, in your sexual development. And it would be a psychological speculation, a plausible one, that an eating disorder may be, in some sense, an attempt to stave off full adult development. Anorexia nervosa can be deadly. Thankfully, Mary Kate appears to be on the mend. She's gained weight and will hopefully avoid becoming another anorexia statistic. Hollywood divorces always come with a ton of tabloid attention. Who could forget the recent split of Brad and Jen? But perhaps the biggest story of all was when the marriage between Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman came to a shocking end in 2001, leading to acres of press coverage. Losing a partner through divorce is one of the big sort of kickstarts for, for needing to change your look. And I guess the reason for that is that once you find yourself alone again, then you recognize that in order to attract someone in a very sort of simplistic, basic way, you need to focus on the way you look. The split hit Nicole hard, as she was only too willing to admit. But spirited Nick quickly picked herself up and hit the headlines with a glamorous new image. In 1999, when Nicole suffered two cracked ribs on the set of Moulin Rouge and two years later fractured her knee, there were press rumors that she might be suffering from the brittle bone disease osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a, a very common illness that affects about one in three women over 50, but there's lots of ways that you can increase your risk, and one of them is being underweight, and one of them is having a poor diet, and in particular, a poor calcium intake. Nicole strenuously denied being tested for osteoporosis, and maintained she was in perfect health. I think it was quite a positive thing for newspapers to link osteoporosis with being too thin in Nicole Kidman's case because most women would never ever even contemplate that happening to them if they went down a couple of dress sizes. If you're a low weight then it does put you at increased risk of um, having thinner bones. Bone health is important throughout the whole life and calcium is important but so are a whole range of other vitamins and minerals. But perhaps the divorce wasn't the only factor in Nicole's weight loss. Could the pressures of youth-obsessed Hollywood also have led the once trim Nicole to be super thin? Hollywood has always been a place that's been obsessed with the way